Uh, morning, everyone. Um, we're going to, uh, and welcome to today's webinar. We're just going to give everyone uh, two more minutes just to sign in. Uh, we have a few uh, late stragglers uh, signing into the webinar. So just give us two more minutes and then we'll start the presentation. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the hot topic of ransomware. It has evolved quite a bit over the last few years, and so your company should, of course, evolve in response, and so we're gonna dig into that today. I'm Dr. Christine Zwakor. I'm your moderator for today's conversation. A little bit of background on me. I've been in the cybersecurity industry for over a decade now. I earned a PhD in security engineering and led numerous security functions at large companies like United Airlines, before taking on my current role as the founder and CEO of Cyber Pop-Up, which is a next generation cybersecurity services company. Uh, now joining the conversation today, we have Jay Gotzi with us. Um, Jay is the head of product and technology for Awareness Technologies. Uh, he has over 15 years of experience building enterprise scale SaaS business focused um, solutions on everything from information security and compliance to third party risk assessment to um, AI and machine learning and data cent uh, centric driven approaches to cybersecurity. So he's bringing a ton of deep expertise um, to the table here today. Perfect person for this topic. Welcome, Jay. And good morning. Thanks, Christine. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and maybe some early morning strategy. So look <laughs> forward to this uh, meeting today. Awesome. Um, okay, so during this session, we're going to cover some ransomware 101 basics, uh, some trends and some, some statistics to know right now. We'll take a deeper dive into the colonial pipeline breach uh, to understand what happened there. Um, and what we can all learn from that incident. Still um, hearing quite a bit of buzz around that. Um, another interesting topic that continues to be a uh, concern is the rise of ransomware as a service. And so we'll dig into that a bit more. And then finally, we will wrap up with uh, gaps in traditional backup and antivirus strategies that people tend to rely on for ransomware issues, um, followed by a few tips for ransomware detection and uh, prevention and what this could look like in practice with Barriato's uh, ransom say. So we'll do a quick overview of that. If you have questions, of course, please don't hesitate to share them in the Q&A window. Um, and I'll keep an eye out for those so that we can try to get through as many of them as we can in the time that we have. 
Also, be sure to stick around until the end. We'll be giving away two um, Amazon gift cards to two lucky attendees, $100 each. So stay tuned for that as well. Now, jumping right into some of the key statistics to set the stage for this conversation, ransomware attacks continue to rise and pose a threat to organizations. The rise of remote work, I believe, has influenced this a bit as well, with users being more lax with you know, security hygiene and behavior at home and so on um, than they tend to be in the office. Um, the stat here, ransomware attacks soared 150% in the last year. Um, also, according to IBM, uh, ransomware accounted for 25% of incidents uh, in 2020. So this is uh, growing so much so even, um, I was reading an interesting article the other day, uh, that careers in ransomware hostage negotiations are soaring and booming. So organizations are looking for people um, to help them in the event that they want to negotiate with uh, these hackers. So interesting uh, things there. The cost of ransomware is also growing. So the average ransom demand is um, about $170,000, um, though larger operations can request up to $40 million. And so how is that ransom sort of determined? Because um, these numbers, that's a, a, a very broad range, right? And the answer is, right, it, it varies. One report showed that um, operators of the ransomware um, Soden Okibi, I think this is how it's pronounced, but um, uh, they were discovered back in 2019, a highly evasive uh, approach that uh, takes proactive measures to evade antivirus detections. Uh, but the group behind uh, those attacks determines ransom based on the victim organization's revenue. And it ranged from about 1% of revenue to uh, up to 9% of revenue. And so um, uh, they have sort of methods to how they determine these things. And you know, even based on those stats on the higher end, um, you know, if you round out the numbers, they're asking for about $100,000 for every $1 million in revenue. So do the math for your, your organization, right? And remember that it's not just the ransom, it's also the costs of operational impact and data recovery and data recreation if lost and so much uh, more. Um, and so a couple of, you know, interesting, a couple of interesting stats uh, happening there. Um, but now there's also been this clear shift in the focus of ransomware attacks over uh, the years that have led to higher payments and um, you know these this growth in attacks. Uh, but I, I've noticed you know sort of this this shift as well too, and that unlike the global attacks of let's say WannaCry or not Petya or things that we saw um, have a lot of impact in around 2017 or so, um, where these attackers would kind of randomly spray and pray with the ransomware and just like hope that they would impact organizations. These attacks are getting much more strategic and targeting a uh, like a definitive sort of uh, revenue goal um, from digital extortion. Uh, there's uh, more attacks that are advanced and tend to search for, you know, backups and try to infect those too so you can't recover. There's double extortion attacks, right, that are not only demanding the ransom, but also um, threatening to leak data. And so all of these, uh, you know, new uh, or kind of twists to ransomware that we're seeing this year. And so jumping into sort of the, the questions and the conversation for today, given all that context and background, um, Jay, can we start by expanding on this from your perspective? Like what does ransomware look like in 2021? Um, what are the latest variants and trends and how has that evolved from your perspective? Uh, sure, Christine. So in 2021, ransomware has been in news and we've seen some of the largest payments made to date. You know, the names like Colonial Pipeline, JBS, Houston Rockets, CNA Financials, even Florida Water Treatment, all of them have been victims of ransomware. And these are the ones that are just in news. And there are like thousands more of small and medium-sized businesses that have not even made to the news, your news flash. So from here, you can see that the spectrum of the businesses that are getting attacked is wide so if you have a business that's making money then you are a target you cannot say that oh you know i'm not a financial services company you know who's going to attack me no that's not true you are going to be a victim so what's changed is right and you touched upon that is that the threat actors the threat actors meaning the bad guys they are essentially businessmen and what they've done over the period is they have honed their business tactics. And from an operations point of view, they've upped their game. So now what we are seeing is a precise attack. 
uh, you know, if you have a, a port that is left open, you know, you have some emergency deploy and you left that port open, you can be very sure that it's going to be attacked in a short period of time. So that's what I'm calling as precision and targeted. You have a vulnerability in a short period, they discover it and they go after it. You talk, then there is the revenue-based ransom. So as I said, you know, the ransom that you pay will be proportional to the revenue that you make. Uh, you, you mentioned here double extortion, and that's that's true. And then that's pretty much what we saw in colonial life is that before the ransom happens, they exfiltrate your data. That means they take your data out. And the negotiating tactic is that you pay us the money or we will expose this data. So those are the ones, and then again, use of ransomware as a service, which we will touch base upon a little later. But you can see that the business tactics have evolved quite a bit, and they'll become more efficient in extorting the money. And then on the technical side, well, actually, the way they land the malware, that hasn't changed. You know, you have the brute, brute force attacks, you have the leaked credentials, you have the exploited vulnerabilities, you have the phishing attacks. It's just the same. You know, you and me, Christine, we talked about this five years back. That hasn't changed much. But what's changed is the agility with which they make changes. Like, like in case of Colonial Pipeline, Bitdefender thought that they had, uh, they had a de decryptor for somebody like any one of those dark side victims, but that didn't work. So the malware actors, they are threat actors. They have been fixing and evolving their ransom really rapidly. And one more important thing that I pre uh, we predict that's going to happen is that the effects of the solar winds, I mean, that's not in news so far, and it's just in, it's in news just this week, is that solar winds was one, of the, was one of the most sophisticated attacks that happened on the US government. And now we're seeing the copycats of that uh, emerge. And Microsoft was a victim this week of one of the solar winds Nobelium kind of attacks. So what we can expect in the second half of 21 is the attacks are going to get, get more sophisticated and with technical expertise and operational you know, improvement, you know, it's, it's in our best interest to protect ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Really good points there. And um, I think the your point on the colonial uh, pipeline is especially in the fact that, you know, with with Bitdefender and trying to come up with a, a decryptor that the attackers then went back and, up, and kind of upgraded their processes and systems or applied the patches necessary so that that decryptor would no longer work. It's just a, a key example of how these organizations are truly operating as, um, as businesses who have uh, processes and patching cycles and in some cases may be better than a, a, a typical um, organizations might be. And so on that same note, um, digging into the uh, Colonial uh, Pipeline a topic a little bit more, um, right? The, the Colonial Pipeline is the largest pipeline system for refined oil uh, products in the U.S. Um, they were hit with ransomware back in May, and this prompted the company to shut uh, down one of uh, America's major sort of arteries for fuel delivery, right, which resulted in physical impact across various states, which I think was, is why this this was, you know, a pretty big deal and continues to be a very big deal. And so um, from from your kind of perspective and, and experience in this space as well, Jay, can you tell us in layman's term, um, you know, what happened here? Why was this so significant? What were the, the impacts um, and so on for today? Sure. So, you know, we, we know the Colonial Pipeline is the largest supplier of uh, gas in on the eastern side of U.S., and they had to shut down their operations. Now, let, let's see what happened. On May 6th, Colonial had a exfiltration of about 100 gigabytes of data. So again, classic double extortion. They took the data out on May 6th, which means the same day Colonial knew that they were on, on ransomware attack. They said that they're not going to uh, pay the ransom, but they, at the same time, they shut down the flow of, of the oil through the pipelines, which means you know, it was very significant internally. And on May 7th, they paid ran ransom. So the whole thing was that the impact was at a real life level. So 
oil shortages, long lines at the pump, had this persisted for a long period, for a certain a few more days, then you would have had the food shortages and everything. So you can just see how this is impacting in real terms in real life. So really big impact. Now, from you know what happened there, it is you know there's one thing that we need to understand is that there is a difference between an IT attack and an OT attack. So IT is where you know you got your financial systems, you got you got your payrolls and things like that. So that's on the IT side. And operational technology is where you have your machines, you know, machines working and supplying the oil. Now the attack happened on the IT side, but they did shut down the OT side. So now you can imagine that okay, that there must have been a serious fear that you know, the attack can go into the OT side. So that's why as a precaution, they shut down all the pipelines. So, you know, it's significant from the point of view that as people design their networks, it's very important to take into account that, okay, containment of the attack is very important. So if you don't contain the attack, you will feel, so what happened in Colonial was the attack happened on the IT side, on the financial system side, but they were very nervous about the, on the operational side. So, the standard sanitization of network segregation was not done and you, you see the impacts so again just going back to basics and if it can happen it was again a uh, ransom as a service attack it was um you know, again the hygiene in spite of the significant investment colonial had made some basic hygienes were not followed through and there you can see how big of an impact they had on the entire us yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one of the uh, biggest kind of highlights of this attack as well. You, you, uh, you know, summed it up uh, pretty well and, and mentioned this also earlier, but we've been talking about this, I think, within the cybersecurity industry for, for years, right? Um, this impact of, you know, cybersecurity isn't just, you know, data, data loss and, um, you know, the data breaches that we see in the news, which are still super important, right? We want to uh, protect data, but it's this crossover into operational technology and the physical impact that, that that can have and that convergence um, that I think this attack uh, has has highlighted once again, right, the importance of that. Um, now, you also mentioned ransomware as a service, right? And I think that's one trend that is helping a lot in this space. Um, an interesting stat here is that 64% of attacks were powered by ransomware as a service, also abbreviated as RAS. And so for those unfamiliar, Jake, can you simplify what this concept means and why it's a concern today? Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, ransomware is a business and the businessmen, the threat actors, the bad guys, they keep improving their business model. So what we have seen in the other industries, right, like in financial services and any other industry is that you have manufacturers and you have distributors. So manufacturers, they they do the job of you know creating something really really good and the distributors take those good products and distribute it across so well what happened in ransomware is the same thing the creators of the ransomware they are very specialized so they just create the best possible ransomware software and then they give it out for rent and the bad guys they rent that software and they attack you now what the here the real impact here is that you know you, you don't have like a homegrown or home brewed ransomware which we used to have five years back you can have the most sophisticated malware that's attacking you so something that attacked the u.s government agencies you can expect that the same kind of malware can be used against smaller businesses so ransomware really sort of democratized makes it democratic the, the the malware that's going to be available to everyone so it's again you know we have to make sure that we button up and make sure and ensure that we are protected against this ever increasing sophistication of attacks yeah absolutely i think the ease of, of launching these attacks at this point especially with the rise of ransomware as a, as a service is just, you know unbelievable in some cases i think i i'd seen a, a stat at one point that you can you can you know potentially buy a an a, attack kit on the dark web for as, as low as you know something like 50 dollars right what what quality it, it'll it'll be 
um, who knows, um, but it's very accessible. And, you know, these are, you know, legitimate businesses to your point where there's, you know, customer service hotlines and um, SLAs and guarantees for your um, attack kits and things like that. So um, truly continues to shift the, the game in terms of the arsenal that attackers, no matter how sophisticated or novice they are, um, that might, might have. Now, shifting to, you know, some current solutions and, and approaches um, to addressing ransomware, and we're going to get into that. I want to throw up a quick poll just to get a sense from our uh, attendees on, um, you know, some strategies that are currently being used to uh, combat ransomware today. Uh, so I'll uh, pop that up real quick. And if you guys can just take a quick second to uh, uh, put your answers in, I'll let that run for just a, a couple of seconds here until I see the responses slowing down. All right, we'll give this another three to four seconds. All right, and I'm going to close this up and put the results up. And it looks like there is a very, um, you know, broad mix. I see, you know, backups, of course, are, are always um, uh, an approach. Antivirus training and awareness is huge. A couple of people on a wish and a prayer. Glad you're on this call here to learn more about what you, what you can do as, as well. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to dig into we're going to dig into that some some more here. Now, um, starting out with sort of, you know, traditional backups and antivirus and, and so on, um, maybe, you know, Dave, you can walk us through what a day in the life of someone who is trying to rely on, let's say, traditional backups and antivirus for ransomware uh, protection. Like, what are gaps in those options or challenges that somebody might face? Sure, yeah. And then just, just picking up on that poll before I answer that, just picking up on that poll, if you ask, like if you go, if you've been through or, you know, if any of your clients have been through a ransomware attack, the first thing is like a wish and a prayer. First thing that comes to mind, oh God, please make sure that, you know, my data is not exfiltrated, please. But that's like the first thing that crosses the mind and then say, oh, do we have backups? Do we have antivirus? So that's next, like in the attack, a wish and prayer is number one and then the backups and the antivirus. <laughs> But just going back to the AV part of it. So using antivirus as a do all and a be all against ransomware is not a good idea. I mean, and here, here's the reason why. The antivirus can be disabled, okay? So, and that's again, based upon the vulnerabilities that you have, the privilege escalations that you have, you can certainly have a malware that can come and disable your antivirus. And uh, then going on, there are other flavors now, the other reasons why, like the zero day attack, which is really means that an attack that has not been seen by a virus before. So viruses look for, uh, the antiviruses look for patterns that exist. And if something that is new, it is not 100% guaranteed that they're gonna catch the, the, the signatures. So there are always, the, vir the viruses are evolving, antiviruses have a lag and yes in that period you are susceptible so the zero day attacks is a reason why you know you just cannot rely on av um you, you still have the tired employee syndrome you know you have an overworked employee you, you've given him the 88 percent of you have given him the training and yes he's fully trained he knows aware but his last straw like on a and after being a, really tired is that oh something is enticing let me click on it He's got his guard down, and then the mal, you know, you have the, again the malware entering. Um, then you have the new, uh, the new is the supply chain attacks, which is the solar wind attacks. Now, what I mean by the so solar wind supply chain attacks is that the malware is attached to some of the components that you deploy under high privileges. So, solar winds is a, is a, is a case, and there will be similar cases like that. So the antivirus will not catch those kinds of deployments of supply chain attacks. So you just cannot leave it up to antivirus to be the you know be all and do all. These controls fail, as we've shown in the past, and not only in the past. This week, Microsoft had the failure against the Nobelium attack. So you need to 
make sure um, that be prepared that okay if you have something valuable then you better back it up and then you need to make sure that you know you have the right kind of the backup techniques and when do you back up because if you back up your backup techniques don't take into account malware then you would be really backing up something that is encrypted and again that's useless uh, so there are backup strategies that you need to make sure that you have evolved considering that okay there could be a malware there could be a ransomware that's going to render your backups useless so yeah the bottom line is don't just rely on antivirus cannot be do all be all and have a well thought out backup strategy yeah really good points there and i think the key takeaway and a common theme i think in all areas of of cybersecurity right is to make sure you have that layered approach and um, something that is is comprehensive, right? There's not one angle or one piece to this that I think will will solve the the problem. Um, and so having that layered approach and continuing to adapt to these evolving threats is is critical. And so on that note, we've talked about um, you know trends and gaps. Now let's get into what people can actually do about this. So how can businesses prevent, detect, and respond to these ransomware attacks? Sure, and and you brought that up in the right right order like prevent right make sure that it doesn't happen again but things happen so what happens how do you if it happens how do you detect it and even after detecting it there's a time lag and the timing could be wrong for you and you could be on the wrong side of the timing and then if that happens how do you respond and recover so let's look at what you can do to prevent and as we said earlier again the you have two areas one is your data center and there you have endpoints over there and over there what you can do is you can reduce your attack surface that means if you have you know you know lots of machines that are devices that are open to public you close that out make the attack surface small fortify that particular those devices that are open to public like your website website and so on you install the current antivirus you patch the systems you ask for, you know, you force strong passwords, you force multi-factor authentications. And these are the things that you can do to just prevent the attack from happening. And again, on the end, use, end user side, which is your desktops and your employees, you know, awareness is important and a lot of us are doing it. Up-to-date antivirus is there. And then privilege access management should be enforced so that employees use are given the least possible privilege to just use the things that they are supposed to do so that's that's on the prevention side now detection side so detection side is is very important and things happen uh, and you need to be alerted so you need a tool that alerts you to any abnormal activity so things like increased file activity you know suddenly the ransomware you will start seeing this is tremendous amount of files being opened and closed and so on and or deleted. So you need to be alerted in, in time or almost in real time about the file activity, like things like renaming of the files, encryption of the files. That's what you need to, you, uh, you need to put in place. You need to put in place also things like, um, uh, you know, there could be certain parts of the system that you don't, any, nobody touches, but then if those are touched, like, you know, this, this could be some honeypots or kind of things that you would be alerted. So that all detects abnormal activity. You should have de detection and then you should have really strong detection primarily because you don't want too many false alarms. If you go into false alarms, it'll lead to uh, ignoring of these alerts. And then on top of that, um, after you detect, you got to make sure you have those controls that, that stop the, the virus from spreading. Uh, it, it cannot go into the other machines on, on the network. So for that, the tool should either kill it or, or render the malware pretty much useless. So those are the things that you can do to detect it. And then from a respond and recovery, uh, your planning is important. You cannot plan uh, after the ransomware happens. I mean, at that time, uh, time is just hope and prayer is, is the plan if you do it afterwards. But before that, there's a lot of things you can do. You can create, you know, you can get some, you can get the cyber insurance, 
We can create a call tree. You identify the individuals with the right set of skills to take care of the recovery mode or the response mode. So planning upfront is a really good investment that you have to do. And then your friend is your backups. Your backups are really your real friends. You need to make sure your backup strategies are in line with the kind of attack that you were going to have. And real-time backups, and backups before encryption are important. Backups that are off the network are important because if your backups are accessible on from the device that is being infected, then the backups are going to be encrypted as well. So the right backup strategies, the segmentation, uh, the gapping of the backups is important. So those are some really basic things you can do to a prevent, detect, and then recover. Yeah, a great approach to you know all three of those steps, right? Critical steps from a um, just comprehensive standpoint. I think one one thing that I want to add or expand on is also that um, insider you know threat piece, which you you touched on a bit, um, but the human element and the fact that um, in some of these cases employees can be to a certain extent or users in general can be to a certain extent an, an asset or a contribution to the, the challenge in, in some point. So I've um, seen, you know, some situations where an employee like might realize like, hey, I clicked on something or I did something wrong and I'm scared and I'm going to try to fix this myself uh, without people <laughs> finding out, um, especially if it's a, a, a small enough amount, depending on the size of the company, especially when we're talking about smaller businesses and this idea of, you know, should I just like try to hurry up and, and pay it and hide or do I actually um, say something? And I think even that um, that struggle for uh, someone, if it's not detected early enough, right, and they're sitting there trying to figure it out on their own, that's wasting precious time, uh, right, that is super critical in this kind of incident. And so bottom line from that standpoint is just making sure that people know what to do across the organization when they, uh, you know, face um, this kind of challenge. A lot of people in the um, in the poll earlier answered training and, and awareness is a, is a part of the strategy, and I, I, I think that's an important part to um, to focus on here as well. So um, great, great stuff on that one. Now, um, continuing on here. So impacting uh, companies of all sizes, of course, ransomware is. And so 85% of security professionals believe ransomware is the biggest cyber threat to small and medium sized businesses, especially Jay, you um, kind of touched on this earlier on, but the small and mid market especially is um, sort of ill-equipped to respond and survive in many cases. Um, you know, may not have as, as many, you know, resources or, or, or people as, as large organizations, yet they're still getting hit and attacked. And so um, everyone is sort of looking for help in this space and a strong strategy with the right people and the right technology and the right features and all of that can definitely uh, help. And so for companies, whether large or small, who are looking to defend against these attacks, um, walk us through some, you know, you, you've, you've mentioned, you know, some approaches and things like that, but dig deeper maybe into um, some of the key solution features that truly matter here. Sure. And yeah, so we, we talked about prevention and the antivirus. AV is, you know, your go-to tool over there. And, but again, you have to be prepared for a ransomware attack, primarily because, you know, business moves really rapidly. Your employees want to move very rapidly, and in doing so, certain things can, you know, short uh, shift it, and that leads to vulnerabilities, and that is what these people are waiting to exploit. So you need a secondary tool to make sure that should the inevitable or should the malware or the ransomware happen, how you can recover and respond. So there are tools in the market that will help you with that, and some of the features that, you know you need to look for in tools are you know, strong alerting functionality. We, we talked about like as soon as there is some abnormality discovered, the tool should be able to uh, alert you on that. And the alerting should be multi-tiered, not just from one angle, it should be from multi-angle. It should look for known ransomware variants that, okay, uh, you know, these are the ransomwares that we have known in the past, known in the past and you know, that, that's a low hanging fruit for the bad actors, but for you, for your tool to detect that, that's that's very important. Uh, it should look for abnormalities in access to various areas of the device that are sort of protected, that nobody would want to go, a normal user will not go into it. So your tool should alert you on that, um, on the activity levels, like 
excessive file activity, renaming of files, encryption activity, renaming of files to some existing patterns of malware, all those, those alerts should come to you. And um, one other important thing is that you know, some, some of the tools we've seen, they completely shut down the, the device. And if it's a large file server and there is some, some activity that is, like says it's a false positive and it shut, shuts down your entire file server, then you're, busy, you're out of, like, you're, you know, you're essentially out of business. So the tool should really be able to dial up and say, take, you know, shut down just those actions that are being, that are happening and not just shut down your entire, let's say a file server. So that's a, as it's an important feature to look for in a tool. And um, again, the ability to recover in minutes. You know, sometimes some of the tools, like okay, the backups are so large, they take a lot of time, and you know the recovery is another couple of days minimum. So you you should look for a tool that can help you recover really in minutes and not days. And some of the non-functional requirements that you should look for in a tool are okay. Again, it should be current. It should be current in terms of antivirus or ransomware variants, it should be lightweight, it should be you know, low CPU util, uh, in, utilization, it cannot drag you all the time, and um, it should be easy to install. So easy to install, easy to recover, easy to monitor. Uh, those are the ones that, um, and of course it should be you know, easy on your pocket too. So um, those are the things you should look for from a functional and a non-functional point when choosing a tool that will help you recover from a ransomware. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, it, it sounds like just to 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 sum up with some you know high-level words um, that comprehensive you know coverage with um, both you know kind of detection and response, uh, efficient, uh, easy to use, and sort of user-friendly, affordable, of course. Um, all really important uh, things to consider there. Um, so, hey, thank you so much for all of the uh, wonderful insight, Jay. I think this has been very insightful, and I think it's a good time for us to get into um, a quick overview of Ransom Safe and some of uh, the the you know features and things that we we've talked about here. All a lot of those challenges can be um, addressed uh, through that. So for um, this portion, I would like to um, introduce uh, uh, Suzanne Perrant, who is going to be walking through a quick overview. While we're prepare, preparing to do that, uh, a quick switch, we're going to announce the first winner of the gift card. Uh, so drum roll, please, virtual drum roll. Um, winner of the first Amazon gift card is uh, Corey Kirkendall. Um, so congrats to Corey. The Variato team will reach out to you with details on uh, that. Um, and so moving right along, we'll welcome Suzanne to the stage to take on the overview. Thank you very much, Christine and uh, Jay, for going through all the issues that are being faced today. Uh, and they happen every day. In fact, uh, I probably have about eight, 10 minutes uh, to cover the overview, but I can tell you that within this eight minutes, the installation of the solution that we will discuss will be done and your protection will be already set. Uh, so that is one of the key point was easy, simple, and fast. So um, let's start with just a summary of what you've heard. So one of the things that you've heard a lot about the AV uh, is the fact that the AV cannot respond to an attack or a lockdown that's uh, that the machine initiated all the time. It can't detect unknown malware signatures. So if the malware is not a variant that is known and within the database, then it can't detect it. It doesn't include a backup utility. The antivirus uh, doesn't really know exactly that it's a, a virus. It just uses heuristic analysis. It does educated guess. It uses historical information. So it doesn't always get it right on that side. Uh, your backups are critical, but your backups and your protocols of backups might be different for everybody. You might have protocols that does it once a week, once a day, uh, at in the middle of the night, and then are they incremental? So it really depends on what kind of protocols you use. And if you do have uh, an attack, then you have to restore the backup or find the backup 
figure out which one it is, which files you need. So the process becomes very long. And then in some cases, you never really completely recover. You may have lost uh, a day, sometimes up to a week worth of information. So the whole idea is to really to try to get you to that point where restoring is accurate and fast. Uh, mentioned earlier the SMBs, and the SMBs, you see Colonials spent, probably spend millions of dollars in their security. And the small business don't have all that capabilities. So the antivirus or the ransomware companies will try to get as much as they can from the small businesses. And they pay. They actually will pay up and because they don't have time to defend themselves the way the larger companies do. So let's look a little bit about what the solution is, what it does, how it can help you, and how fast it can do it. So the first thing is to try to look at the solution based on the installation. So in our product, which is called Variato Ransom Safe, and the name, the name means that the there is a safe where all the data or all the files are located. So once you install, and like I said, it's less than 10 minutes, you install the software. It's a server-based software. The software runs and just sits there. So you literally just can let it sit and it'll just alert you when something occurs. Uh, you will no longer need to be held hostage. You'll no longer need to pay any um, any ransom and your negotiator will be having a cup of coffee quietly. Uh, your IT guys, on the other hand, they'll get the alert. They uh, will get a not notification, the user's locked down, and now they can go to work and then they can clean up the server and figure out exactly what needs to be done, make sure that the user themselves computer is cleaned up and all the ransomware is removed before they even open up that user because that user can continue to access a file and then just replicate it across the file servers. So that is really key and especially today where I would say 50 if not 70 percent of the employees are now working remote. The ability for infiltration of ransomware has really grown very uh, very high now. So what do you want to do once you've actually uh, note that the file has been encrypted? You don't worry about it because now every single file, so as the software runs, every single file that has been touched by the user is copied. So what does that mean? You have access to the pristine copy of that file. You restore it in minutes. You identify exactly which file you want to restore. Once everything is cleaned up, you open it back up, and then your environment is regularly, readily recovered in a few clicks. No expensive downtime um, and no expensive downtime either. And one other thing you can do is even so you can go as far as giving the user access to their own files that have been saved and then restore them from the uh, the safe or from the repository of files. Now, how does it do all this? Uh, a couple of things uh, that it does. Uh, next slide, please, Christine. So there's a couple of ways that the solution, the ransom safe does. So in order to be current, we do file screening and we do the signature files. So every day, multiple times a day, we have access to a database that has a multitude of current ransomware and it updates the signature file directly on your server. That file is used to detect immediately a known vi variant. But of course, there are many variants and variants replicate themselves for those who've been watching potentially one of the series called Loki. Uh, there are many variants in the world. There are va many variants of a particular signature. So what if we don't catch it and the database is not updated? So we have some a second, a second one called the honeypot, and that's a deception method. It's a deception method for the ransomware. Uh, 
and throughout your drives or throughout your file server, we will drop little honeypot files at different strategic locations in order to catch the encryption of a particular file, a particular ransomware of a particular file. And then we'll do the exact same thing. We'll alert the operator, uh, the administrator, and then the process of cleaning up proceeds. But you're still fine because all the files are in the fail-safe location and you can restore them as pristine as the moment before they were touched. So it doesn't matter if they do get to any other files before they ca we catch it with the honeypot, we have the ability to restore and we keep multitude of revisions as well. And then, of course, uh, from the lockdown point of view, gives you the time to restore everything. So let me. Um, so that kind of gives you a, a quick, a quick overview of the solution. And the uh, the next slide really hovers uh, over some of the reviews that we've had from small to large accounts, who overall have had nothing but great things to say it just works as they say it sits on your server or your group of servers you can manage multiple servers from one console and it really does do exactly uh, what it's intended to do this is for you to use as a customer but we also have partners who use it as a service for their customers and offer what they refer to as ransomware or ransom safe as a service to prevent all these things from happening. Uh, Christine, if uh, you're ready, that kind of just summarizes uh, the overview of this, the product and you can definitely schedule a ransom safe demo at any time by sending a request to sales at variato.com. Christine, you can awesome. um, take it from here. Thanks, thanks, Suzanne. Um, before we we wrap up, one one question to uh, uh, pop in here. Um, you talked about uh, you know some uh, you know reviews and, and feedback from from customers. What would you say is you know one uh, maybe um, you know story or, or example of kind of the, the the impact or what this kind of technology or tool has has helped a company accomplish or avoid in in many cases. Uh, well, for uh, this for me, the question, <laughs> just to make sure oh, yeah. I'm not jumping in on Jay's. <laughs> on Jay's um, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, all, I don't want to say a lot of the customers. I want to say all the customers, and I'm very confident uh, on saying this. The product gives them the ability to restore in a very fast moment in time. That was their biggest thing, is the ability to quickly find the file and restore the file. They don't need to go find the backup. They don't need to put up uh, a request to the archive. Everything is there in the moment. It's If I can use this analogy, it's kind of the AFLAC insurance. So it's in the between of everything. Uh, and that's what they found. And of course, they didn't have to pay. The cost of the software is a fraction of the cost of a um, a, a hostage uh, payout. Thank you for that. We have an, another question that has has come in as well too around um, the copies of the files that are made. So our I think the the premise of the question is are is it making copies of incremental changes or what's the sequence of the the backups? Yeah, it does make an, a, a full copy of the document. Okay. Okay. Awesome, thanks. Well, hey, I know we're, we're getting close to our, um, our our time here, so I wanna say, you know, thanks again to Jay um, for sharing your perspective here. Thanks, Suzanne, so much for the for the overview and for taking a couple of questions. Um, at this point, we will go ahead and wrap up. Gift card winners, uh, gift card winners come yeah, in. Oh, sorry oh, to interrupt, we just have one more gift card to give away before everyone goes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, getting to the gift card uh, winner in one minute. Um, but just to summarize here, during the session, we covered the latest trends in ransomware, why traditional antivirus and backups aren't enough, you know, what you can do to prepare and evolve uh, your company to combat these growing threats. So great discussion. Um, thanks to all of our attendees for spending the last hour with us. And again, thanks 
um, to Jay and Suzanne for joining the conversation. Our last gift card winner coming here. Thanks for, for sticking around till the end. Another virtual drum roll, please. Um, our winner is Kayla Alston. So congrats to Kayla. Uh, the Variato team, again, will reach out to you with uh, details on that. Um, again, thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't forget to reach out to Variato for a more in-depth demo of Ransom Safe um, and how it can help your company. Um, you know, contact sales at variato.com. Um, and again, yeah, thanks for, for joining us. Stay safe and secure out there and have a fabulous rest of the week. Thanks, Christine. Thank you, Christine.